Hello everyone, my name is Hal, this is Quail Studios Guitar. How are you doing today? We are going to talk about Old Friends, which is a song by Simon and Garfunkel. And we're going to compare it also with some tabs and to help you understand exactly what to do. Let's look at the chat and see who we have here. Hi Bob, thank you very much. Tom, hello Tom. Dwayne, <laughs> it's good to see you. Let's see, I see nobody else there. That's fine. If you'd like, put your name in there, tell us where you're from. Some of these guys I already know where they're from. I appreciate them very much. So old friends, I, you know, I, to tell you the truth, <clears throat> this was on bookends, the album bookends. I wasn't really, really familiar with it. I'm sure I've heard it a couple of times in my life. But Bob pointed out to me, hey, you know, I really like the song Old Friends. And so I've been thinking about that kind of uh, song for a while. And, and I got it out the other day and I thought, I'm just going to do a video on it. And remember how we were working on the C major scale? Just like that. Well, let's see here. Hello. Let me go to, let's uh, pull up an official tab. I'm going to show you on screen an official tab from, from ultimateguitar.com. I hope this is okay. This is this is a uh, one that I downloaded because I have a uh, an account with them, and also I'm going to look at the lead sheet, and it says capo fourth fret. So we take our capo and we put it on fourth fret if we want to be in tune with the recording. And let me tune it up really quick here. I don't know. I don't know the last time I tuned it. I'm a little out of tune. Just a little. I know you you might be saying well you should have done that before you got on the live stream it sounded pretty good before but I just thought I'd check it here we go that's a little better let's look at this at these chords we got F major 7 and then this says E minor with a G bass. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. And then it says D minor with an F bass. It looks like this. Oops. Keep doing it wrong. G7, C, A minor, G, C6 with a G bass. And we're going to talk about all of these chords. Let's talk about F major 7 and E minor with a G bass and let's go back to the official tab here. You'll notice it says the intro is 70 beats per minute. It says 3858. This is an F major 7 right there. And this is not an E minor 7, excuse me, an E minor with a G bass. Because right here what you see is that the E minor looks like this and the G bass would be the third fret right there. So it would be three two two zero 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 but on this it says three three two zero 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 so this is actually a C major seven with a G bass so right there between the tab the official tab and the official lead sheet there's discrepancies I have a feeling that whoever was making the tab did not consult with the person who was making the the lead sheet and so it doesn't really match up. You can even see it right here. F major 7 on the intro, E minor with a G bass and I will tell you why I like the C major 7 with a G bass. It looks like an E minor chord like this, excuse me, I said the wrong thing, E major chord, right? But you go up a fret and then over that way it's the same kind of shape. But I don't use my first, second, and third finger. I use my second, third, and fourth finger to do that. Because when you're playing an F major seven, you just go this way with those two fingers, actually do that. And this finger just moves your middle finger, your second finger just moves from the G string to the D string. 
like that, and makes it really easy to play. Now, I also had, I took the liberty of getting a recording for you to listen to. Now listen to this. And you know what? I'm going to play this, and we're going to see what happens. Oops, let's move this over. We're going to see what happens. I might get dinged for, hey, you know, you're playing Simon and Garfunkel's music, so that's why I ask <laughs> for people to to support me on either Patreon or Subscribestar or at PayPal because if I get, you know, if if I won't get demonetized, but um, they'll share monetization with me or something like that if they think that I'm, you know, playing their song. So let's listen to just a little bit of it really quick. Can you hear it? It's a little bit louder now. Okay, and there's strings that come in there. Okay, so we're going to get rid of that just for a second and go back to here, and it says 3858. Eight. Like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 1, like that. But take it, check it out. When I count it with the recording, you know what? I'm going to go over to, oops. I'm going to go over there and see if there's any chat going on. Oh, good, 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 good. Bob says my balance is good. Tom agrees. Okay. I just want to make sure that it sounds good for everybody today. And they say it does. I appreciate Bob being the moderator. <coughs> He's a really great moderator. So let's listen to this recording one more time and count it. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see that? Do you see what happens there? So as I'm listening to this very, very carefully and counting it, you'll notice that in that beginning of that recording there is there are no drums there's no rhythm instruments at all there's no kind of it's just it's just just a strum and then another strum and it goes back and forth just like that so when we have this happening there's no um and there's no rhythm, we just have to guess, right? And I was counting one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one. Two. Because the amount of time from here to here, if we divide it into three parts and then we keep that pretty even, you'll notice that it actually sounds more like six than five. And I can slow it down one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. You know, you can do that if you count it. But if you try to keep it really even, I think it's more like three, eight, six, eight. Now, what happens in the official tab is it goes down when it gets into the verse to 3868. Eight. But then when the strings are playing too, it doesn't sound like 68. It sounds like 3888. Eight, eight. What would that be? 44. Four. Uh, it sounds like 8 eighth notes. Now, I'm not getting on anybody's case about this, but right now, when you get at the beginning of this, It's more like just a feeling. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. I really like the three and six. So if I, you know, what's, let me say something too about this. I haven't been playing this, I've been playing this song less than a week. So I don't know it very well. A lot of times I learn a song very, very quickly. And as I start playing it and performing it and using it and teaching it and that kind of thing, I get revelations about, wow, this is what we should be doing here, or this is what we, sh yeah, what we should be playing, or maybe this chord would work better, or maybe this timing would be better. Don't be afraid to make a song your own. When somebody does a cover, when a famous person does a cover of another song, they don't always try to do it exactly like that person. In fact, they rarely do that. They make it their own. So feel free about to do that, and don't get uptight about Hey, that's not exactly the way it was in the original recording. Don't get on that, that bandwagon. Get off that bandwagon. Okay, so here we go. 
<clears throat> one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, when they get to the verse and they go, Old friends, old friends. I can imagine Paul Simon playing the guitar and the strings being right there. They can see each other. There's a conductor. You got to have a conductor when you have a bunch of strings so that they can stay together. And the conductor looking at Paul Simon and giving cues about when they're going to be coming in because this is the way they did it back in the day, back in the 60s. They didn't do, you know, like, okay, the guitar will put down his part and then the strings will do their part separately because they did more, you know, they didn't have 24-track players at that time, 24-track recorders and, and multiple things like we do now, the digital stuff. Anyway, so be really free with this. Now, when you get into the next part, listen to this. Right here. Sat on their park bench like bookends. Now you have now you have um, some rhythm going on with the with the guitar. And so you can tell how many beats per measure they have, or you know, how many beats they're gonna use in anything. Uh, let's go back just a little bit and I'll count it for you. Friend. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Or whatever. So you can see that there, when you listen to it and you hear that rhythm in the guitar and the movement of the strings then you can tell oh okay now we can tell where the beats are so this part now when I'm looking at the tab all of a sudden I'm going well wait a minute the tab doesn't match what's on the recording that's why you guys have me right right here at the beginning of this it goes dum dum not this one I think it's right here listen to the Sat on their park bench like bookends. Okay, what I'm hearing is. Okay, now let's go back and look at the tab. I'm not seeing it. Right there, we get the three open, one, one, nothing, open, one. Uh, you know, it's not there. I, I get it. Uh, okay, I'm starting on the B string. Three, E string, open, one, one, open, B string again, three, back to the E string, open, B string, three, one, that's what I'm hearing right there. Now this right here, this three, three, if we go over to, this is why I like to look at both of these. We've got a D minor with an F bass. If we go to the chord right here, it looks like this. And you get the three, three, It's like a G right there, that G7. So right here, you do have that. And then you get this. Let's see. What would it be? That's it right there. So this is like a C chord right there at measure 14. Can you see this on a phone? Probably can't. If you get on a computer, you might be able to blow it up a little bit. So they got that, the C, G with the B bass, A minor, right? So it's like a, and then like a G7, oops, and then a C, and then this part. pretty accurate it's not too bad um, you know when I'm looking at these tabs right here I see that right there at measure 14 
if you take those notes right there, that open one, A string open, one on the B string, and then you get that two, two, and you put those all together, that's an A minor chord. So I think of these as being the G chord. Oh, I'm sorry, I said the wrong thing. C chord, like a G with a B bass, and then an A minor, and then this. That part right there, it's like a G, C, G, uh, maybe C, A minor. So if I fill in the notes that I think it would be, right? Now, the notes aren't filled in, but those are basically the ideas of the chords because you got your bass note and your upper note on the B string right there, open, and then you got an open A and one, and then two, three. I'm calling them from the bottom up. A string, B string. So I'm thinking of... If I play along with that, let's just listen to it just for a second. Bum, 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 bum. Sat on their park bench like bookend. Right here. A newspaper blown through the grass. See that? When I play that with the recording, all of a sudden it matches perfectly. So those notes right there, I think of them as being a G chord to an A minor to a G with a B bass to an A minor to a G to an A minor again. But you don't have to play all of those notes in the chord. Because he doesn't play all those notes, but that's how I think of it. That's how it goes in my mind and I just play the outer notes. G chord, A minor, and then a G bass. And it, this is really on uh, measure 18 right here. I would think of this as being a an A minor with a G bass. Here, right there. Can you see that? I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger so you can see it and move it over. They're calling it, I'm going to circle it with my with my mouse, they're calling it a C6 with a G bass, which is actually true. Uh, the A note right there is a 6. and then, But it looks like an A minor with a G bass to me. So that's what I think of it as. I'm just trying to help you guys out just to give you an idea of how I'm thinking of it and how I approach it. Now, let's see, if I bring up my notes here, no, I'm not going to bring up my notes, I'm going to wing it. And then it starts again. Old friends. And I think instead of using on the tab right here on measure 19, it's it says like a C major 7 with an E bass, you could use the same chord you did before. All right, here's my, here's the secret. You got it? Shh, don't tell anybody. Here's the secret, guys. <clears throat> the secret to good music is if it sounds good, it is good. You got that? If it sounds good, it is good. So if this sounds good, or this, right? That one or this one, it probably doesn't matter if you play the C major 7 with a C bass, with an E bass, with a G bass, if you play the E minor with a G bass, I mean, if it sounds good, it is good. Okay, that's my that's my pearl of wisdom that I want to give to you today. The other thing that I'm looking at here is when I'm looking at the tab right here on measure 19 and 20. Look at look at all this stuff in parentheses. What is that? What is that? That's right at the end. Uh, that's the old friends. No, that's just before the old friends, isn't it? Here, let's go back to the recording and listen to it really quick. Oh, you couldn't see what I was looking at, could you? Here, let me take this off the screen and you can see what I'm talking about. <coughs> Sorry. Right here. Uh, let me move that over a little bit so you can see it. Right there. What are all those, what are all those numbers on the tab with the parentheses around it? And right there. I've been playing guitar for a long time and I know how to read music and tab. And these puzzle me. They really do. Because if I listen to the recording, check it out. I 
Pebbles on the round toes of the high shoes of the old right here. friends. Right here, right here. Sounds like strums. Old friends. Okay, let's stop that right there. Now, that that part, you got strings over the top of everything, and it sounds like he's just strumming it. And I can't really hear the strums really well. I mean, I could focus in on it. Maybe I could get one of those programs where I could isolate stuff. You know? And then down here, when they go to the uh, C major 7 with the G bass down here again, they've got all these parentheses, the numbers in parentheses again. Is that is that strums? I can't tell what the strumming is. I mean, I can see a strum right here, and then I see parentheses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven in parentheses. So what is that? One. Is that it? One, two, three, four, five. Is that it? I don't know. It might be. You know, it, okay. And that's and that tab isn't exactly right there either. Okay. If you have any comments, let me know in the in the comments. <laughs> I'm going to take this off the screen just for a second, and I'm going to go back and look and see if there's any comments. <clears throat> if it sounds good, then it is good. Does not apply to ringtones, says Paul. You'll have to explain that one to me, Paul. You don't have to do it here. We can do it <laughs> privately, and you can tell me what that means. <laughs> Let's see. Um, let me go back. Uh, Dwayne says, thank goodness. I really play exactly as they are recorded. Bob says, neither do I, but that could be boring to be exactly like the recording. Dwayne says, Bob, I just do that to cover my poor abilities. Ha! Tom says, got it. I like that, if it sounds good. Dwayne, our secret. Let's see. Wasn't typing fast enough to catch that. Dwayne says, I'm not sure what that indicates. Paul says, how many fingers brush by that string on each strum? That's a good question. I'm glad I look at the comments one time. Um, let's see. Let's go back and look at... Let me see here. No, we don't need that. So when I do... So what I do here, I'm just using my thumb right now. I'm not using a pick like this. Because I want it to be really subtle. And then also, I'm going to be going to going to do some finger picking so I don't want the pick to be in the way. When we're looking at those strums, what happens a lot of times, I'll strum it, and then on this uh, C major 7 with a G bass, I'll play that low note, I'll play the whole thing on that first strum, and then I just strum right up here, like on the four, three or four strings right there, like that. So instead of going... Right, beginning guitar players have a tendency to want to hit all the strings all the time, but you don't want to do that because it gets really boring really fast. So if I was just playing that and strumming it, how's that sound? So the the perception is that you get this going on, and then you get this. So it's like two different parts. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. How's that? Sound good? Thought I'd do that for a little bit so you could see what I was doing. All right, let's go back to, you know, it's basically the same thing with verse two. And then we have a bridge. <clears throat> right there you can see the bridge and uh, you can listen to it I'm not gonna go through the whole bridge and everything right now 
unfortunately. But we're going to talk a little bit about this recording. What happens is a little bit farther on down the line after the bridge. The guitar goes away and we have we have strings that sound to me like the Beatles back in the 60s, you know, like right you know the string quartet with uh, Eleanor Rigby very I don't know was Eleanor Rigby before this or was it this before Eleanor Rigby I wonder who got the idea but I like it but in the ending like the bridge and then towards the end the vocals completely drop out and to me this whole section becomes like avant-garde here let's listen to this now right here right you get a lot of strings going on there and the you can't hardly hear the guitar and then right here I mean I'm, I can hear the Right, I can hear that melody, but the harmonies are really strange. Right here. What is that? I mean, honestly, I don't really like it. <laughs> so if I was performing this, <clears throat> I just had some thoughts that I'm not going to say, but uh, Paul, you and I need to talk about it. Um, about a band because okay i just put that in anyway if uh if i was performing this live i would not even try to do this part it's just crazy stuff i mean and then it just kind of uh, i don't know at, at the end it's just uh okay <laughs> what does it do here on the tab well when we get to the end you know uh let's see instrumental it says and then you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen measures of rest. No guitar stuff at all. No tab, nothing. <clears throat> it does have it says E minor nine right there and G six add nine right there on those uh sixty seven and sixty eight. But honestly, uh it's, you know, I would probably make up something for the ending. You know, I would make it like bookends, right? How I started it is how I would end it. And uh, it would sound really wonderful that way. Okay, and that's what I would do. Um, honestly, I don't know what I would do right now as far as chords go and things like that. Let's look at the official the official I'm gonna make this smaller here lead sheet over here what do they do on the end well they have this instrumental section and they have all these chords that they've you know they've listened to the the strings and said okay we think it sounds something like this and that a sharp 7 if you go back up here and you see the a sharp 7 chord and you see this F major 7 with a B bass I mean it's just like I don't really like that chord. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. And then you got an E chord. And you got a bunch of stuff here that, to me, uh, I would probably do something different, just to let you know. I would I would take that instrumental part and make it different. And then I would do an outro. The outro looks like they say E minor with a G bass, but I would actually do you know an E F major seven to a C major seven with a G bass. Ooh, okay, let's talk just for a moment. Remember we were talking about the C major scale? Right? When you have a capo on, you're actually playing the scale of this song. Isn't that awesome? I've gotten some messages saying they really appreciate the last video that I did and talking about these scales and the 
a theory behind that and that kind of thing. But you know, that, that really goes along with um, what we're doing here. Because if you look at the, here, old friends, let me do it again, old friends. actually using the notes in the C major scale that we talked about before, right? Really, it's just the C major scale. And uh, I, I had a wrong note there, but let's just forgive me on that. So those things that you've been learning, I forgot to say this earlier in the in the broadcast, but the C major scale that you've been learning when you put the capo on the fourth fret and you play old friends, it's awesome because it goes right along with what we've been learning. That's why I want you to do that. That's why I want you to play the C major scale, learn those chords, F, G, C. We, you can see that we use them right here. We got um, a C chord, you got a G7, you got a G, you have an A minor, and we talked about that and we'll talk about, I'll put out another video that talks about the secondary chords in the C major scale. A minor, E minor, D minor. We don't have a D minor on here, but we do have A minor, and we do have, if you want to play an E minor, you can play an E minor. There's an E minor 7 in here, right? Okay. So, thank you very much for being here. Let's see, is there anything I need to look at? Let me look at comments here. Bob says, I prefer this song as completely guitar and no strings. And Tom says, I agree. Uh, yes, <laughs> Bob says, remember to hit the like and subscribe. Thank you very much. I just looked it up. The numbers are the fingers you use on your left hand, if you're right-handed, to play the notes. Index is one, middle is two, ring is three, pinky is four, open strings are open. Yep. Paul is not a guitar player, but he's learning. Okay. So, uh... This is true, Paul. Finger numbers, one, two, three, four. Right hand doesn't have numbers. P-I-M-A, or thumb, index, middle, ring. P-I-M-A comes from the Spanish tradition for uh, pulgar, indice, medio, anillo, which means thumb, index, middle, ring. Right? We don't have a number or a name for the pinky. I just call it a pinky. I use it sometimes, but sometimes classical guitar players don't use the pinky so they don't talk about it very much all right any other comments or questions or quejas quejas or gripes in spanish gracias por estar aquí ustedes i don't think anybody speaks spanish here if you do that's great i know that there are a lot of people who check out my videos from other countries that part sounds like an elo song i didn't see that paul thank you it does Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you talking about the strings? Very possible. Electric Light Orchestra is what he's talking about. That's what ELO is. All right. I'm going to go hang out with my supporters, and uh, we're going to have a fun time. If you want to learn how to do that, look in the description. I do have... Now, I'm using a BR-73, Blue Ridge BR-73. I think in the description I have a link to that, so you can look and see what it is if you're interested in even looking at the guitar. I have other links to strings that I use and things like that in the description. If you buy things on Amazon using my links, that helps to support the channel too. Yo Español es muy malo. <laughs> yes, I need to jump on YouTube, on Tube, and listen to the song in its entirety. Yes, you do, Dwayne. Very good. All right. I'm going to see you guys later. Thank you very much for coming. Like the video if you like the video. And uh, we will see you later.